Hello, so this is going to be a video on the Chinese MF14 gas mask or respirator. Now, this is one a lot of people ask me could I review because these are very easy to get on AliExpress now for not very much money, about 20 to 30 dollars or pounds plus shipping. And what's interesting with these when I was looking them up, the older version of this mask was Ghost threaded, the newer ones are 40mm Stanag NATO threaded, so you won't have any issues putting any of the sort of common filters on them. Now, apparently, the easy way to tell that is if you look at the sort of voice diaphragm XL valve cover, if it looks like that with like the great style design on it, then that's the Stanag version. If it's got like a round sort of looking um, cover on it, so a circular sort of design, that's the Ghost one. Apparently there's a more modern version than this one, but as this was a brand new one, you know, dated very recently, that's probably not very common. So anyway, the one I ordered came with a sealed filter, I've opened it, one of these sort of Chinese generic sort of multi-function filters. So screw that one in. And it's got a little neck strap on it, which is quite nice. I always like masks that have this, just so when you're not actually wearing it, you can hang it around your neck. Now, supposedly, this is mostly intended for industrial use in China, but apparently because it's so mass-produced and of a decent quality, it's ended up in quite a few places. So, as well as being exported from China to several armies and, like, civil defence forces, you know, it's exported for industry and, like, commercial use, like how I've bought it. But... Apparently even like some divisions of the Chinese army and like civil defense type troops and whatever have it as well So it's basically one of those masks that because it's good enough It's ended up being adopted for lots of things even if it's not the official mask for lots of purposes So there's a five-point head harness and the rubber's relatively thick So it's that sort of standard silicone material lots of these are made from but it's fairly thick so it's not a thin one So five-point head harness um, this reminds me a lot of the pewter mask, except it's not crap. So if you uh, see my review of probably the worst gas mask I've ever reviewed, this mask is basically that if it was made to a good standard. So rather than having very flimsy rubber, it's made from good sturdy rubber. You know, the straps don't ping off because they're actually, you know, made using a proper friction kind of system. So if you took the pewter mask and actually made it good, this is what you'd get. So if I put it on, then tighten up all the straps. There we go, so I'm not sure if there's meant to be a proper little chin shelf on this, but my chin's gone fully in and that feels quite comfortable. Yeah, this is one of those masks that in theory has like a little chin shelf, but you don't really have to use it or make a good seal regardless. So if I wasn't using a chin shelf, I'd probably loosen that strap a little bit and pull this harness a bit further down. But yeah, it's not certainly not uncomfortable. It's, um, like I said, it's it's quite basic for a panoramic mask. Uh, at least it's got like a simple voice diaphragm mechanism in it, so you can hopefully hear it. This is certainly good for the cheap price. Um, you know, the I did try it with my Riot helmet, and because the straps stick out quite a lot, this isn't really going to work with certain helmets, so bear that in mind. But, you know, because the bulkiness of the straps and the harness, certain light helmets, if they're tight-fitting helmets, won't work with this mask. Even if, you know, they'd actually fit around the shape of the mask that way, they might not work because of these bits sticking out there on the top. Certainly doesn't fog up, so that's good. The oral nasal cup's quite good. As I said, this seems to be, like, you know, they've got a good ground between the rubber being flexible enough, but not, you know, being so, um, sort of soft or whatever. It droops out the way. So, yeah, this certainly isn't an uncomfortable mask, like I said. Um, you could probably aim rifles with it fine, because that's there, so you could, you know, cheek weld. Again, no idea how strongly rated the plastic visor is, but I imagine it's not too bad, you know, because most modern mask plastics aren't, you know, even the cheaper ones, aren't anything too brittle. So, yeah, there's not a lot to say about this. Obviously, if you bought the modern one, it's in 40mm NATO, not Ghost. So you'd have no issue getting filters for it, and it's, you know, actually new. So, yeah, it seems quite good for what it is. Again, you know, lots of masks like these don't have massive a history bounce, you know, behind them, so there's not loads you can talk about in that regard. But, in terms of, this is cheap and you can probably buy it in most places in the world, the thing I do like about with the AliExpress-type masks is that, 
you know, when I get people who watch my videos, sometimes from poorer countries, say in Latin America or bits of Africa or Asia, you know, if they can get stuff shipped from AliExpress, it's often affordable on a lower wage. Whereas, you know, lots of these people can't afford some of the stupidly priced surplus things we have, say, in the US and the UK, and bits of Western Europe. So, you know, masks like this are always good to review for people who either have a very limited budget in the Western countries or, you know, the global south, whatever you want to call it, you know, just don't have that sort of money available to buy top of the range stuff. So, yeah, this mask, if you put, you know, a really good top tier filter on it, I imagine it would be completely serviceable for lots of things. Like I said, I was actually quite impressed how good the voice diaphragm is on this, where I can actually see the bars on the camera for how well the mic's picking it up, because even if I stand back here, talk at a decent volume, it seems like, you know, the camera is picking it up fine if it's just directional mic. So, um, that's good. There's a little bit of a weird sort of echoey kind of thing after I talk in the mask, but that's not too distracting. But yeah, this MF-14... I'd probably recommend it, because, you know, I can't see any faults with it. And if you can get this for $20 to $30 brand new with a filter issue, and then, you know, just buy a better filter, you know, anywhere, this is pretty damn good in all honesty. Like I said, a lot of the Chinese masks now are getting to the stage where even the cheaper ones are good. You know, there's still a couple of models I'd avoid, like the Plague, that, you know, really aren't fit for purpose, but they seem to be dying out in the sense that, you know, if the sensible priced export masks like these are cheap enough, you know, the companies are just going to fold that are making the stuff that's so crap they don't protect anybody, because, you know, if you're selling something that doesn't work for $5, and then for $7 somebody's selling something perfectly serviceable, it's going to be obvious why they're going to die out. So that's good. I think also COVID has helped quite a bit with the Chinese export market, where it seems like obviously lots of the masks have to meet a better regulatory standard of actually working as a respirator. So there you go, so the MF-14, yeah, I quite like it. There's not much vision distortion looking like left and right with the panoramic lens. It's obviously not a top tier panoramic lens, but it's not bad. Um, so yeah, the MF-14 seems quite good. So I said, five point head harness. Let's get all that undone again. And yeah, as I said, I'll show you on the camera what it looks like if you're looking out from it. But you know, it's, like I said, a good sort of panoramic lens. You can see how the voice diaphragm bit with the exhale valve is there. Oh, look, one of the nose bits has fallen off, so that's not great. Although, that's just literally held in by friction by the look of it. So, that has just popped off one of the nasal bits. So, um, I'll push that back in later on. The one on the other side's fine, but yeah, it's just obviously come off due to um, it not being pushed in very tight. But the mask would still work even without that there. That's just on the inner oral nasal cup. But yeah. So, other than that falling off just now, the mask seems absolutely fine. So, as I said, repeating my points, this, I can't see a problem with you getting this mask if, you know, you don't want to spend the budget on something better. Um, like I said, for something that is a $20 to $30 mask, this seems pretty good, especially now it's, the modern ones aren't GOSS, they're NATO threaded. You know, RD40 Stanag, the fact that, you know, you can buy one and in pretty much any decent country on the surplus market or from industrial stores by 40 millimeter uh, ABEC filters, you know, or still sealed sort of good condition military surplus filters that, are, you know, are going out of date or only just gone out of date and still sealed. Um, this would be quite a good mask. So, yeah, as I said, there's not loads more I can say about it. There's not a really long, interesting history behind this thing. It's just an all right mask that you can buy brand new, which is always good. You know, because it's better that you can have ones at the lower price points that work, rather than having to rely on surplus stuff that is very hit and miss, depending on what the condition it's been stored in, in and everything else. And just to show you, I've reattached those. Basically, it's one of those ones with a little lip, you have to sandwich the rubber around it. So, the oral nasal cup just literally pulls out of the mask, and you can obviously push it back on by wrapping this bit around that bottom bit of the mask there, but while it's off, let's just quickly put it on again and see how bad it is without the oral nasal cup. Other than fogging up, it shouldn't actually cause many issues, so... So... Oh, that, when I pressure checked that then, that smacked me in the nose, that was a bit painful, the bit of hard plastic there. But yeah, other than the fact this is obviously going to fog up easier, 
does give you a very big field of view about that oral nasal cup there. But yeah, I'm just going to obviously pop that back in for comfort reasons and obviously anti-fogging. But yeah, that just literally, the oral nasal cup attaches in the rim sort of around the um, voice diaphragm type structure there. It's just got a little plastic rim there. So you just sort of stretch it over and then it fits between the two bits of plastic.